the indigenous art history, for example, like that's 10,000 plus years of art making, you know? Uh, and so the, the, the way that the Museum of Anthropology uh, intervenes or intersects with that particular, those particular 10,000 year histories, that's an important part of that. Uh, and that's also the reason why I'm saying that's an important question, you know? And I had made, you know, I had thought that it, they actually wanted me to talk about being a Taltan artist within within the con, con um, within the uh, within the exhibition. Like these are my ancestors; these are Taltan ancestor artists, right? And uh, so my mistake was is that they want they I thought that's what they wanted, um, but they really wanted me to give the green light to their exhibition. Uh, anyway, so, you know, the, the objects in the museum, in the Museum of Anthropology, they are alive. It isn't a thing like, you know, art historians kind of at, you know, 10 years ago or, you know, at 2005 even, were kind of positioning that creative practice by Indigenous people as still an object or an ethnographic kind of thing, right? But I'm in that museum and everything that is alive has an energy and it is pouring into my body, you know, because this is how human people are, right? We connect with energy as much as we connect with voice, with body, with intellect, you know, all those kind of things, uh, right? Anyway, at some point I wake up, mm -hmm. You know, right in the middle of Anthony Shelton talking about blah, 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 museum, anthropology, blah, blah, blah. And I just was like, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're not talking about how these objects got in here. You're not talking about the percentage of the objects in here that were actually stolen by uh, anthropologists, white anthropologists. You're not talking about that trauma of that removal. A anyway, so I needed to be brave enough to say to the museum people, like, you are changing my vision and my work, and you're shaming me because I don't have access to the things that you have, right? And Karen needed to be brave because she needed to move outside of those particular comforts to meet my practice. Mm -hmm. and artists who are making work, indigenous artists who are making work, they need to be able to think and develop and dream unimagined possibilities for those spaces, right? Uh, I never forego, I never forwent, forwent, um, that the art gallery is also a colonial outpost. Yeah, but there's, how do you move into that space? You know, uh, especially when your body is pushed upon by colonization, right? And so in order to reimagine my participation in that space and the potentiality of my partici participation in that space, I started to imagine that the art gallery and subsequently the museum is one of those places where time, all times intersect, right? So. And again, Christian, uh, it's Christian, it is Christian, that word creation story, right? And how so many anthropologists applied that to the stories of indigenous people. What is your creation story? And then when they got critiqued, they changed it to, what is your origin story, <laughs> right? And this, this fucking thing actually ties, and I, I know this because I've been doing the work, right? This fucking thing ties to, where are you from? Mm -hmm. No, where are you really from? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all thinking about it together right now, right? 
And um, I want to say, first of all, that indigenous art is super sophisticated and super complicated and super, um, super conceptual and super um, uh, uh, it, it is experienced in a very different kind of way, you know. Um, and I've had to learn that. And uh, museums did not help me to do that. It hurt it. I think part of the part of the answer is that museums need to recognize that when they don't and aren't able to communicate the entire experience of indigenous artwork, then they're actually contributing to colonial harm, not just to indigenous people, but to white people or whomever is in the space as well. You right? And so it is fucking insidious to hide that indigenous power. And most museums only have 3% on display, right? And as a young indigenous person, that's specific, specifically me. <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> uh, imagine to be held by that much indigenous power. Imagine where we could be, where I could be, if I had more access to that indigenous power. When you come from a, a non-Western a non European culture, the act of speaking uh, isn't just a voice. So my body, is, my body speaks fluent Taltan knowledge. My making speaks Taltan knowledge. My voice speaks Taltan knowledge. Where, how, I, how, I, how I relate to people speaks Taltan knowledge. Right? Um, that is a huge thing. So I, I kind of took that one idea, which is overvalued by Western European cultures. And how many times have people said to me, you don't speak your language? Right? And back again to, where are you really from? So it's aligned, right? And then I, I did this, right? I opened it up. And so my answer was my entire being and my spirit body speak Taltan knowledge. And everything that I do contributes to Taltan nation art history first. That's not an intervention. <laughs> 